and they that fear God love it not. Okay, so we have no love for Bahar, Bidya, and and any other niggas that's like him, or that were like him before. Okay, because he's a fornicator. Okay, and the Lord gonna destroy him. All right, let's get the judgment on him. Okay, uh, Leviticus twenty and ten. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. That's plain. Alright? So that's what's going to happen to this wicked ass nigga. Okay? Go back to 1 Corinthians 5 9. It says, I write unto you in. in, in Excuse me, right unto you in an epistle not to keep, not to company with fornicators. Yet, not altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. Because that's, that's, so, I mean, these people out here in the world that we have to be among, uh, these heathens and wicked ass two third niggas, like, when we work or just going carry on our daily life Paul wasn't talking about those people because those people are going they going to be fornicators covetous extortioners idolaters because that's what they're giving out to especially the, the heathen all right otherwise we have to we have to like totally remove ourselves from the earth basically 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an, an idolater or a roller or a drunken or an extortioner, which such and one know not to eat. Okay? So he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm the brother, brother Mahar Bidya. Okay? No, you're not a brother. Okay, and we're not supposed to keep company with you because you're a fornicator. Okay, you in, you engaged in unlawful sexual practices, i.e. adultery, which is an abomination, an abominable custom in the eyes of Yahweh Shema Shai. Okay, so the Lord going to do away with you. Alright, verse 12. For what have I to do? What have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. And that's what the the head of the camp, of the St. Louis camp, that's what he's supposed to have did. He's supposed to put that nigga away, but he suspended him and was keeping him around. So what happened? You was justifying the wicked. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Okay. You justify the wicked, and you condemn the just. So the Lord, He got he, you an abomination, okay, and you was disobedient. So judgment's gonna come on that whole camp, man. All right. This is um First Corinthians six and nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. That's plain. Alright. Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Okay. That's plain. So that's what's going to come on this nigga. And you know what? Because you, you, you love that philosophy of adultery, which is highly glorified here in America. It's part of the abominations of this wicked ass place, which is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures. You're going to be part of that lake of fire, man. Let me get that. I'm going to end it on that. Okay, this is Revelations chapter 21, excuse me, yeah, yeah, 21 
and 8. It says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay. So you're going to have a part in that second death. All right. So let this be a warning. All right. That there's no excuse, man. There's no excuse for any brother or anybody calling themselves an Israelite to be practicing adultery, man. According to the scriptures, you got examples of Joseph. All right. Abraham and Isaac. Okay. And even these heathens. All right. Uh, what's the name of uh, King Abimelech of, of Ger of the Philistines and uh, Pharaoh of Egypt during the time of Abraham and during the time of Isaac, they didn't even commit adultery, okay? They respected uh, Abraham and his woman, Sarah, all right? And Isaac and his woman, Rebecca, because the Most High was with them, okay? But the Most High ain't with no darn adultery. So any adulterers out there or, or niggas that's uh, indulging in unlawful sexual uh, practices, the Lord's going to deal with you, okay? All right? So with that, you know, death, death, death to you wicked ass niggas, man. Straight up. Oh, oh, let me get that. Get that. Yeah. All right, death, death to you wicked ass niggas, man. All right. Anybody justifying these niggas, you're going to be destroyed too. Okay. What's that on? This is Proverbs 6 and 32. But whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lack of understanding, and he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. So you don't know, man. The Lord might put the spirit on that guy whose woman you had got some oral sex from, some top of top. He might come and uh, blow your ass away, man, and blow that bitch away, okay? And that will all be the judgment of the Lord, okay? So, because we in a time, man, it's, the Lord, he's he about to open up shop on Jake, man. So any of you, you guys that's bullshitting, the Lord going to get you, man. This is uh, 1 Peter 4 and 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with us, how shall what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Okay, that's right. So, you know, it's a fearful thing, man. All right. So you gotta be on guard, man. So with that, you know, hopefully it's edifying. Salaki, if it seemed kind of long-winded or drawn out, you know, but, you know, hopefully it was edifying. I want to give all praise to y'all about Shemal Shah, double honors to those, a great millstone taught me this truth. Shalom to the brothers out there teaching the truth and sincerity. Um, with that, I say Shalom.